Hey y'all, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Ashley and this week we are making my Christmas Eve dinner that I like to make every year for my family and that's the chicken pot pie. A couple of years ago when I was single and hosting orphan Christmases in my apartment, I was trying to think of something that is approachable and warm and reminds people of home and I thought immediately of the chicken pot pie. And compared to the turkey and the roast and the ham that are traditional, this is a welcomed, refreshing, comforting meal to have during the holidays. And of course you can make it year round too. So let's go ahead and get started with making our chicken pot pie by making the filling. So I have a stock pot right here or a large saucepan, you can use either or. And I'm going to fill it with some poaching liquid, which is going to be chicken stock. So I've got the pan preheated so we can move things along a little quickly. And I added in the chicken stock and now I'm going to add in some boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And we're going to poach this chicken in that liquid. And it will be um, 160 degrees when we take that chicken out. So we'll bring it to just above um, a simmer or actually right a little bit lower than a simmer and that will poach the chicken. So poaching is when you heat up the liquid just until it starts to simmer. Once the, the bubbles start, then you've gotten it too hot. And this allows for a nice juicy tender chicken rather than an overcooked boiled chicken. So we'll go ahead and let that come to just above or just below a simmer. Then in a large saute pan, we are going to go ahead and add some olive oil and um, some onion, celery, and carrot. So that's called a mirepoix. So we're gonna go ahead and add some vegetable oil. And I've preheated this pan as well. And we will start with two parts onion. And one part carrot. And one part celery. We will go ahead and saute this until it starts to be tender. Usually this will take about five to seven minutes. And we're doing it over medium heat. And you don't want to brown anything in here, you're just making it soft. Um, and so it'll be like a nice translucent color and not caramelized brown. So make sure that you watch your heat while you are sauteing the vegetables. you get um, the onion brown or caramelized, sometimes that can make a little bit of a bitter taste in the chicken pot pie. So we're just gonna watch our heat and saute this until they have softened. All right, our mirepoix has started to soften. The carrots and celery are really vibrant, so they're starting to cook a little bit. And then we also have the onion, which has started, started to soften and look a little bit more translucent um, rather than a, that bright opaque white of an onion. And then our poaching liquid over here, we want to be between 160 and 180 to be a proper poaching temperature. And we are at 171. So this is the temperature that we want to maintain and that will finish poaching the chicken, which will come up to 160 degrees when we are finished cooking it. So that is something that I will keep measuring as we're cooking. This mixture is getting ready to come off and then we will go ahead and start making our sauce. So I'm going to let it saute for probably two more minutes, then we'll take it off and start making our velouté sauce for the chicken pot pie filling. Our mirepoix has softened enough that we're going to go ahead and take it off of heat into a large bowl. And it'll just sit there until we put all of the ingredients together in the sauce. So just put this aside. Now we're going to start building um, something called a velouté sauce. So if you saw my green bean casserole recipe, we built something similar with mushrooms. This time we're just going to make a traditional one. Uh, so it's a chicken velouté sauce. I've got some unsalted butter that we'll put in the pan and melt down. It's okay to use the same, um, the same utensil. It's all going into the sauce at the end. So we will just melt this down and then we will add flour to make a roux. And I'm making a traditional chicken pot pie casserole today. You can use any kind of filling. So if you're just wanting to go through and, and use up leftover ingredients in the refrigerator, you can throw in any kind of vegetable with onions in your pot pie. Um, this is just a traditional recipe that I stick to for Christmas Eve because I'm a traditional kind of gal. It's that southern part of me. 
since it's almost melted down, you can also cut it into pieces. That'll probably speed up the process, but we're not going anywhere until that chicken's cooked. We've got time. So this is melted down, and now we're going to put in an equal amount of flour. So we put in four tablespoons of butter, and we're going to put in four tablespoons of flour. So I have a little extra than four tablespoons here, so I'm only gonna use about half of it. And we'll stir it in. So a roux acts as a thickener when making a sauce, and it's what gives the, the sauce kind of the velvety texture. And when you have a really liquidy roux like this, rather than clumps, this is called a wet roux. And we've got even parts flour and butter. And the longer you cook it, the more flavor it develops. So we're going to stop at what's called a blonde roux stage, which is a light color. But when you're making a, um, like Creole cuisine, then they have a really dark roux and they'll just continue stirring this until it gets a really dark uh, golden color, even past that, like an amber color. And that's what gives them such flavorful sauces. But we're just gonna keep this at a light brown color. And definitely stir constantly because this can also burn. I'm gonna check, looks like my chicken's got a couple of bubbles, which means it's a little past the poaching temperature, so I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. And now let's add in the chicken stock. So we're, use, we're starting out with two cups of chicken stock. And we'll just slowly pour this into the roux mixture. I like to use a flat spatula for this, or sometimes I even use this flat whisk. It's really great when making sauces to make sure that the chicken stock and the flour incorporate with a lot of without a lot of chunks. I definitely use it when I'm making my biscuits and gravy. But we will just pour this in slowly, continuing to stir to keep lumps from forming. And then this sauce is going to thicken and it will be the liquid part of our chicken pot pie. all combined. I'm actually going to switch to the flat whisk. It's not as messy to move around a little bit more vigorously. And we'll bring this up to a boil and then add in some spices and then reduce it to a simmer and let it thicken. Now this is a scratch pot pie so you're looking at probably a 30 to 45 minute process but it's so delicious. To me, chicken pot pie is the best treat. When we got it at home as kids, I just felt like we had, we had really done something good <laughs> for mom to have chicken pot pie in the house. So it's definitely a nostalgic treat for me. All right, let's let that rest for a second and come to a boil, and then we'll reduce it down to a simmer. Meanwhile, I'm going to temp the chicken water because it does look pretty warm. We'll reduce the heat a little bit so it goes back down to poaching. It's still a little hot with that lid on. I put the lid on so the temperature would come up faster. It's a little bit of a trick when you're trying to get water to come to a temperature faster. Just put that lid on so the heat's not escaping everywhere. And we'll just wait a few minutes for both of these to come to this one to go back to a poach and this one to come to a little bit of a boil. Our sauce is coming to a boil so we are going to reduce the heat and we are going to add in a little bit of our herbs and spices. So I have some dried thyme and a little bit of cayenne. This just gives it a little tiny bit of a kick. You don't notice it. There's just kind of a little bit of heat that'll pop up and you kind of wonder what it is. It's a little bit of cayenne pepper and then some garlic powder. And we'll stir that in. This is going to be a really flavorful sauce. This is definitely not a frozen pot pie. It's fresh and homemade, really flavorful. We're going to put in about a half a teaspoon-ish of salt there and about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And you can see that the sauce is already thickening, which is exactly what we want. And that was the whole purpose of the roux was to thicken it. And then we are going to add in some milk. And this will give us really just a nice creamy, velvety, chicken pot pie filling. Just 
slowly pour that in. I'm using whole milk, but if you wanted to really make it rich and decadent, you could use a half and half or heavy cream. Just don't use as much. I'll let this thicken before I add in the rest. This flat whisk also gets anything that's on the bottom of the pan, so we didn't brown any of the onions or the celery. Um, or carrots, but any of the oils or onion pieces that were left in the pan, this will pick up and flavor the sauce even more. Definitely love making sauces with this flat whisk. Okay, we'll bring this back up to a boil, and that will encourage thickening a little bit more, and then we'll reduce it back to a simmer. And I'm also going to temp the chicken, and this is a little hot now that it's come to temperature, so I'm going to grab Towel. Check our temperature. I'm actually going to temp the chicken. It might. Awesome. It's 161. So right at temperature. We're going to remove the chicken into this bowl to let it cool, and then we are going to shred it. So this chicken probably took about 10 to 12 minutes to cook. Always make sure that you do it by temperature and not time. You want to make sure your proteins are always fully cooked. We will remove this and not use it anymore. And this is going to continue to come up to um, a boil so it'll thicken, then we'll simmer it, and we will shred the chicken and add the rest of the ingredients and uh, fill our pot pie dish. This mixture has come to a simmer again, so we're going to reduce the heat and it has thickened. You can kind of hear how the bottom of the pan is hot, so that's how we know that it's definitely thickening on the bottom. And we don't want to scorch it, so I'm going to reduce the heat, give it one good stir, and now we'll add in the rest of our ingredients. So I've got some frozen peas that have been thawing. It's okay if they're still a little frozen, no problem at all. It'll definitely heat up in cooking. And we are going to add that mirepoix, so the onion, celery, and carrots. All of that is going to go in. If you really want to make this a decadent dish, you can add just a little bit of sherry, of dry sherry to this. It'll give it a nice little flavor. And then I've got some parsley, so I'm just gonna sprinkle in a little bit, probably about three tablespoons full. So we've got our traditional pot pie filling and flavors in here. And then we are going to shred our chicken. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to take a couple of forks and shred it into uh, bite-sized pieces and we'll put it into the pot pie filling. I finished shredding the chicken and now it's time to assemble the casserole. So I'm going to give the sauce just a little bit of a taste to make sure that it doesn't need any salt or pepper. It's really hot. This is one way to totally fry your tongue. <laughs> you know, give it some time to cool. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. It's all to taste. We'll stir that in and then we'll, we'll stir in the chicken. So this does have a little bit of salt in it because we cooked it in chicken stock, but I do buy low sodium chicken stock, so it shouldn't be much, but it will add a tiny bit of salt to the inside of the filling. And we'll just stir and fold this in until it's fully incorporated and all the chicken has a little bit of sauce on it. And then we will pour it into a 13 by nine casserole. Now you can use any kind of dish if you want. If you have a favorite holiday dish that's a, a large circle or uh, I don't know, any other kind of shape that you have for the holidays for your casserole dishes, uh, you can use that. It just traditionally will fit a 13 by nine casserole. So we are going to pour this in there's no need to grease the pan at all. This is a, a soupy interior, so it's not gonna stick. And we'll just move this around so the chicken's evenly distributed if it's not already. I love chicken pot pie because of the pop of color too with all the different um, the oranges and greens and then that creamy sauce on top. Okay, this is all in, 
in the uh, casserole pan and now we're going to take a pie crust and lay it over the top. So you can use store bought, you can use store bought, or you can use a homemade pie crust. In the card above, you can see my recipe for flaky pie dough. I am going to use that one, and we'll roll it out on top of our casserole. Cut a couple of vents, and then we'll pop it into a 400 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to go get the pie crust, preheat the oven to 400 degrees, and we'll come back and put it on top of the casserole. I rolled out my pie crust on the counter on the other side of the kitchen. I needed a little bit more room. It's a 13 by nine ish pie, uh, pie crust. It's a rectangle. And I say ish because you do want a little bit to go over the sides. And we are going to just fold it around. This is going to be a little bit of a rustic. You can trim it where it's too long, but we do want it to fold just a little bit. Okay, it looks a little bit more rustic than I was hoping. <laughs> but it's really warm, right? Because the filling is warm, so it's hard to be super decorative with this one because we don't want it to melt too much. So I kind of think of it of like a slab pie. This size is a little atrocious, to be honest, but that's okay, it'll taste delicious. But it is really warm. And then we will take a paring knife which I put someplace. All right, we have over here, so we're gonna take a paring knife and we're going to make a couple of slits and that's going to allow the steam to escape. So the pie crust will be really puffy um, and not be um, soggy because the steam, the steam stays stuck underneath. So I cut three diagonal slashes on the top. We'll go ahead and put it in the 400 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes until the insides are nice and bubbly and the crust is nice and golden brown. The pot pie is out of the oven and you can see that the sides are a little bit bubbly and the crust is nice and golden brown. That's when we know it's finished. If you wanted to, before you put it into the oven, you could take a cream wash or an egg wash and uh, brush it over the top and that promotes the browning. But sometimes that can give a false sense of security in the browning in that it's over browned before the crust is cooked because the egg wash makes it a darker color. So I didn't do that for this one. We're going to let this cool because it is very, very hot. And then in about 15 minutes, we're going to take a bite and it is going to be delicious. I cannot wait for you to make this at home yourself and let me know how it goes. It truly is a treat during the holidays, but of course, any time of year you can make it. So let's let this cool for about 15 minutes. The pot pie is cooled and now it's time for our taste test. You can smell the buttery crust. It's going to be so delicious. I'm so excited. I just love chicken pot pie. So the inside, of course, is nice and juicy and bubbly. The sauce has thickened, but it is also runny. So there's not a bottom crust, so you can expect to have just a little bit of juice um, when you are spooning this out. And it's totally okay. Oh, one fell off over the side. But you can see that it is thick enough that it's not just weeping everywhere. So that's how we know that we got the velouté sauce exactly how we want it. Chicken is nice and tender. Come here, little guy. <laughs> All right, so let's give this a taste test. It smells so good. I can see the thyme in there. It's such a savory herb. Mm. That chicken is so good. The secret to this pot pie is poaching the chicken instead of boiling it. It leaves it nice and juicy but cooked thoroughly. I love poaching chicken for chicken pot pie. Let's get a little bit of crust. Mm. The crust is nice and crunchy on the outside, but really buttery and tender. Guys, I just can't tell you enough how much I love chicken pot pie, especially when it's cool outside. Thank you for watching today's episode and joining me in the kitchen. If you liked today's episode, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We post new content every week and giving us a thumbs up lets us know that you like what we're producing. Until next time, cook great food in your kitchen, share it with those that you love, and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm. The pot pie is cooled and now it's time for our taste test.